In a sport full of strong characters, Pete Sampras stood out. By the time he finished his playing career, he had collected 14 major singles titles and held the number one title for 286 weeks. But his career equally sticks out as an individual pursuit as it is tied to his arch rival, Andre Agassi. The two defined a generation of tennis. They left the sport handing the baton to the next group of legendary players. And Sampras had to wage a war both on and off the court to win. Pete Petro Sampras was born with fighting blood. With largely Greek heritage, his mother immigrated to the now small municipality of Sparta, home to the ancient city-state renowned for its warrior caste system and military culture. Instead of a spear, though, it was a tennis racket that would be Pete's weapon of choice. Ever since he picked one up in the basement of his family home, he was hooked, killing time at home by perfecting his stroke, knocking tennis balls against the wall by himself. It wasn't long before he found his way to a tennis court, and when his family moved to Palos Verde, when his father secured a job with the U.S. Air Force, he could barely stay away from the court, playing all year round in the California sun. When he was 11 years old, he was given the chance to play with his tennis idol, Rod Laver. This set in stone Pete's destiny, and he only improved from there, training with renowned coach Robert Lansdorp, who would in the future work with Lindsey Davenport and Maria Sharapova. Under Landscorp's wing and later another coach, Pete Fisher, Pete Sampras developed the skills needed to go pro, which he did at the age of 16, skyrocketing through the rankings and remarkably closing out his first year inside the top 100, taking out multiple top 40 players on the way, including Jim Courier. But Sampras still had a long way to go, hovering at the edge of the top 100 throughout his second professional year too. By the end of his third year in 1990, everybody in the sporting world would know who he was. In 1990, Sampras skipped the French Open and was knocked out of the first round of Wimbledon. But all of that was leading up to his home Grand Slam, the US Open. He made it through the first four rounds, only dropping one set, before grinding his way through Yvonne Lendl and John McEnroe to set up a showdown with a young up-and-comer who made it to the finals in the French Open earlier that year. The two had played five times before, including twice in their junior career. During a junior match, Sampras felt that Agassi had been toying with him for two hours. But now they were both mature players, competing for the biggest prize in U.S. tennis. For Sampras, it would turn out to be a career-defining rival, Andre Agassi. Agassi was the favorite going into the 1990 U.S. Finals and already held the number four ranking spot. But Sampras made a mockery of the odds, firing 13 aces past Agassi and in control of virtually every point. The scoreboard ended with a clean sweep in straight sets, where Sampras had steamrolled Agassi in an absolute masterclass. It made him the youngest male player to ever win a Grand Slam at just over 19 years old. With that, Sampras was catapulted into superstardom, appearing on The Johnny Carson Show and being recognized on the street, what he admitted was a difficult transition. Meanwhile, his nemesis was loving the attention. The US Open would be far from the last time Sampras and Agassi faced off. Their careers had become entangled. Both born and raised in the United States, their first Grand Slam meeting signaled an all-American era of tennis domination. Both players had radically different playing styles. While Agassi preferred to wear down his opponents with perfectly weighted shots from the baseline, Sampras was an aggressive player who relentlessly attacked, blasting a second serve with almost the same strength as his first, which was one of his biggest weapons. With a serve and volley combination that was one of the most powerful in tennis, he earned the nickname Pistol Pete. This clash of styles, along with the depth and versatility of each of their skill sets, made for a thoroughly entertaining matchup. But it was also a contrast of personalities. Andre Agassi had joined the tour from his hometown of Las Vegas with a brashful, trash-talking persona, matched only by his long-frosted, tipped hair. Agassi relished the spotlight both on and off the court, marrying movie star Brooke Shields, and was even caught up in a drug-taking scandal. At the opposite end of the spectrum, standing out from the short-tempered American figure like John McEnroe, Sampras shied away from media attention, preferring to keep a low profile and avoid publicity. Even on the court, he remained focused with his head down. His refusal to engage with the public made him a respected figure, but one who never attracted the same level of support from fans as Agassi. In the five years since their first U.S. Open meeting, Agassi and Sampras played each other another 15 times, including five more Grand Slams, each match virtually a coin toss of elite tennis, making it a must-see matchup. But their careers were about to head in completely different directions. Sampras rose to number one in 1993, closed out each year with the top spot for six years straight. In that time, he won Wimbledon six times, the US Open three times, and the Australian Open twice. 
2000 saw his final Wimbledon victory, and in 2001, he failed to make it past the first four rounds of any Grand Slam except for the US Open, which he lost to newly crowned world number one, Leighton Hewitt. 2002 looked to be heading the same way. Sampras's star was still fading, along with much of the American giants who had presided over the previous decade. He was knocked out of Wimbledon in the second round and was barely clinging onto a top 20 ranking. At the age of 31, it was likely one of his last years in the sport, with players like Roger Federer on the verge of breaking through to global dominance, signaling the beginning of the Big Four era. At the 2002 US Open, though, in the same tournament he had won to kick off his career 12 years earlier, Sampras pulled off a miracle. Going into the competition, he was the 17th seed and all but written off from any success. However, Sampras surprised everyone by grinding his way through the first four rounds, beating third-seeded Tommy Haas on the way. He continued this form all the way to the finals, taking out Andy Roddick and Sheng Shalkin to meet an old familiar foe in the finals, Andre Agassi. Agassi was resurging after a recurring wrist injury and dropping off from the tour, finishing 1997 outside the top 100. In 1999, he returned to the number one spot, winning both the French and US Open, and on track to finally beat Sampras at his home Grand Slam. But in a similar fashion to their first meeting in 1990, Sampras dominated Agassi in four sets to take his record-breaking 14th major title and capped off a phenomenal career. Sampras led their head-to-head -head stats 20 to 14, walked away from tennis over the next year, only making his retirement official at the following US Open, where he was given a hero's farewell. At the time, most agreed he was the greatest of all time, but has he since been eclipsed? Eight years after their showdown at the 2002 US Open, Sampras and Agassi faced off once more. This time, it was a charity match, with Sampras paired with Roger Federer and Agassi with Rafael Nadal. Despite the match being billed as an exhibition, it didn't take long for things to devolve into an old rivalry. With taunts and insults flying, nobody was quite sure whether they were joking. Agassi mocked Sampras for taking the game too seriously, who fired back by imitating Agassi's pigeon walk. And it didn't stop there, with Sampras hitting a ball directly at his old rival. Whether intentional or not, it was enough to put the audience on edge. Agassi later apologized and revealed that Sampras hadn't replied to his text message after the match. But the two legends have since gone some way to burying the hatchet. They found friendship during the 2011 Champion Series, bonding over fatherhood. It was these similarities, intense competitiveness, and opposite playing styles that drove them both to the top of the world in a rivalry tennis world is unlikely to see again. Sampras' milestone of 14 Grand Slam titles was only beaten seven years later by Roger Federer. As the game, courts, and equipment evolved, Sampras changed his game too, moving from a serve and volley towards a baseline strategy favored by his rival, Agassi. This excellence and adaptability makes Pete Sampras a clear candidate for the greatest of all time. If you ask Sampras, he believes that Novak Djokovic has now well and truly settled that debate. But there's one moment that no player can ever replicate. Sampras's 2002 US Open run will forever remain one of the best fairy tale underdog stories in sport, etching his name into the history books.